G'day blokes and chills, today we're going to be looking at the cream of the crop of hypercars of Night City. Small caveat here, the prices that I will be listing are the second hand used market prices. So if you did have the cash to buy a brand new one tailor made to you, uh, probably double if not triple these prices. Starting with the Herrera Outlaw, heralding from the luxury car manufacturer over in Spain. Created in 2072, this car is still very new to Night City when it's really due to the import costs being still very high. So let's get into the performance. Weighing in a little over 1.8 tons or 3,999 pounds for my NUSA friends, couple that with the power of a 750 horsepower motor and you will be cruising Night City in style. A top speed of 186, a 0 to 60 in 2 seconds flat, a reverse speed of 42. Now let's talk about its capabilities off-road. Well, the Herrera is all-wheel drive and that gives it a pretty good handling off-road. And with a bit of skill, you won't fishtail or spin out or anything like some other sports cars do. As for its inner city handling, it's pretty right. Using that acceleration is great, but its long body does sort of let it down a bit as it does tend to clip a lot of things if you slide around corners for some reason. Now we move on to looks, the main reason why you buy a Herrera. The Spanish designers chose an all chrome futuristic look to further emphasize the exclusivity of owning a Herrera Outlaw. This is evident with the whole bodywork being a very sleek shiny chrome with matching rims. At the front you'll see a beautiful front grille. This is also where you'll find the luggage storage comfortably fitting a very expensive handbag. At the rear you'll see the large encompassing rear tail light letting everyone know in the next city over that you're going to be stopping. This is also where you'll find the Herrera's 7 litre V8 that has been tuned from the factory to always be ready to deliver. As we move inside the design is similar with chrome stainless steel being all in the upper parts of the cabin. You'll also notice the Herrera's signature red leather harvested from a rare breed of cattle found only in Spain. Biotechnica has tried several times to clone this bovine with limited success. Being a limousine, the car is fitted with four seats, four doors, with passengers in the rear seats, often the owner or executive enjoying the full glass window roof, giving them an amazing view of the city as they drive through. As for instruments, this car keeps everything tight and minimalist. With there only being a few controls around the cabin, this is due to the Herrera being custom made to order, so you don't really need too many customization controls clogging up everywhere when it's made for you specifically. And then there is the internal lighting, which is an overhead light in the cabin, which activates when the headlights are turned on to give the executives riding in the back a lighter, brighter experience. Finally, the price tag. Coming in 62,000 eddies, it's not cheap, but it's a statement piece because not many people can afford it. Next car to show is the Rayfield Caliburn, a hyper car to satisfy all those with the need for speed and the eddies to burn. Designed in the UK, production started in 2070 and since then has quickly became the car to own for the rich and famous. And as a hyper car, performance is nothing but top tier. Weighing in at 1.67 tonnes or 3,682 pounds for NUSA friends, paired with an absolutely massive 1,660 horsepower engine, which we'll get to soon, the top speed of this monster is 210 with a 0 to 60 in 1.5 seconds, a reverse speed of 34, and now we get to the actual handling with the off-road performance it's actually pretty good. Nothing amazing, but you won't be sliding around on ice out in the desert. But because this car is built very low to the ground, it tends to buck every time it hits a crevice or a crack or something or a little tiny rock in the ground. Then we have inner city handling. Now this is a weapon for the road, so you do need a little bit of skill to use it correctly. It will spin out if it gets airborne and it does not like to power slide. So it's very much slow into the corners and then as soon as you start coming out of it, then you start accelerating. Don't go too too early or else it will spin out. And let's talk about the exterior of the Caliburn. Sporting a white and chrome two-tone body and a very noticeable lack of a window and I'll be getting to that in a moment. You'll notice the rims are lightweight titanium and the car is mainly being made of titanium carbon nanotubing compound similar to carbon fiber but much much stronger. At the front you'll find a wide open air intake with the grills along with your boot space. Plenty of room to put a spare pair of shoes or even a pair of pants. Moving to the rear, the first thing you'll notice is the very large exhaust array in the wide body. Next, you'll notice the glass covering the engine bay. Inside, you'll find the gigantic 8-litre V16 engine, which is basically two V8s smashed together at a 45 degree angle with four turbochargers hidden away. This creates your 1,660 horsepower. 
that's it for the outside, so let's move on the inside. And as I mentioned before, let's talk about the lack of the windows. Well, this is due to crystal dome technology, a very important advancement in not just transportation, but in the massive plus for privacy. Naturally, driving the car draws eyes, but due to the crystal dome display, and it also doubles as armor, because let's face it, this is Night City, there's always some gangbanger around the corner looking to earn his stripes. Inside the design scheme changes to a red and white two-tone with the leather being farmed from cattle in Lancashire, where Rayfield has established a very closely guarded farm specifically to control the production of the leather, which is of course all hand sewn to fit the customer's exact body dimensions. As for controls, it is very minimalist apart from the speedo to the forward of the steering wheel. Next you have the media controls, but very unique is the back of the cabin where the wall curves from floor to roof allowing the seats to be very low to the ground. If he's trying to put a rear window in means that the seats would have to be higher would make the car too high and as a spokeswoman for Rayfield has said quote our customers lifestyles normally have no need to look back especially given the car's exceptional performance we find looking forward is the only thing our customers truly want end quote. Now at night time when you turn your lights on, you'll notice the neon lights will appear alongside the doors just underneath the windows, as well as a set of four lights above into the ceiling. This gives a good amount of light throughout the cabin, but it's not distracting enough to be very bright. And it's good that the lights inside the cabin aren't too bright, because this car travels very, very quickly and you don't really need that distraction. Finally, the price tag of this masterpiece will be yours for 157,000 eddies. For all those who value speed above all else, you'll never regret buying the vehicle, even secondhand as this one is. Lastly, an honorable mention to the Black Caliburn, which has been reported to be purchased and shipped to Night City by an eccentric billionaire playboy philanthropist by the name of Bruce. Sadly, Bruce hasn't graced our city skyline with his presence as his city was attacked by a clown or something. I tell you what, these billionaires, they get crazier every year. Moving on to the height of luxury, a car so high end that it coined the term ultra luxury and heroin from UK. I'm obviously talking about the Arendite S9, made by Rayfield, the rarest car of Night City, weighing in a little over 1.8 tonnes or 4,052 pounds for NUSA friends, paired with an impressive 950 horsepower motor. This luxury car can get up to a top speed of 190, a 0 to 60 of 3 seconds flat, and a reverse speed of around 34. With all that, let's talk about the handling off-road, somewhere that really no luxury car should be, but this car can handle it easily. With it being rear-wheel drive, it's not amazing, but you don't need to be a pro off-roader to use this car off-road. This allows the errant diet to simply go anywhere. Moving on to the inner city handling, it is alright, but due to its long frame sliding around corners, it tends to hit a whole bunch of things, very much like the Herrera Outlaw. Especially because it's rear wheel drive, it can tend to spin out a little bit, so you do need to take your time plotting your course through traffic and turning into corners slowly before accelerating and executing the turn. Because remember, you're rich and you're better than everyone else, so take your time. So let's take a look around this beauty, starting with the exterior. Made almost entirely from the same titanium carbon nanotubing material used for the Rayfield Caliburn. Difference here is more material has been used to extend the length of the car to make it more luxurious and stand out in appearance. The rims are made from solid space grey and titanium and the silver is actually the unpainted metal to show off how rare the metal is. Some owners such as Lizzy Wizzy who owns an Arendite had it actually polished to a mirror chrome like finish. Moving to the front you'll notice this swept back design and three distinct intakes, very symmetrical. This is also where you'll find the 7.5 litre custom V8 with dual turbo chargers hidden underneath. Very simple and elegant design. Going around back we can see an extreme slant of the back end. Now there could be a boot at the back of the Arendite, however Rayfield has stated that its Arendite line will not feature a boot because they want their customers to have no worries of such thing as their car is only to show or to drive, not to transport some shoes or luggage. In layman's terms, if you got the Yetis to burn on a Rayfield, it means that you got the Yetis to 
get someone else to carry your luggage around. Now, moving on to the interior, just like the Caliburn, the Arendite features a crystal dome display giving the occupants total privacy. Inside, the controls are simple and minimalist with the media controls being mounted on a slender dash with a push start, something which is optional. Now, part of the reason why there is no boot is actually because there is an advanced AI. This computer not only identifies the owner, it also taps into public information of any passengers and moves the chair, air conditioning, warmth of the chair, and basically all around tries to make the experience the most comfortable that that person will experience. So what do you have to do to get one of these? How much is it gonna cost? Who do you have to kill? I had a look around and there is one being sold secondhand at 225,000 eddies, so not or a bad amount of scratch. So let's start naming some names of the famous people of Night City who actually have an errand on. Starting with the obvious regional director of Rayfield, he has one. Then Lucius Ryan, the deceased former mayor of Night City. Next is Eroyu Fujika, an Arasaka employee with no more information. Then there is Kerry Uridon, famous musician with noticeable bands being Samurai. The next is Mikhail Akulov, a fixer in the Soviet Union. Rumor is the allure of capitalism has turned him. And if he's got himself an Arendite, I'd say he's hooked. Then there is, of course, Lizzie Wizzy, the famous musician of Night City and chrome goddess to all the pro cyberware people of Night City. And finally, there is one being sold by a fixer by the name of Wakako, who has one for sale with the former owner being the ex-ambassador ambassador of Argentina. And there you have it, three hypercars of Night City. And if you have the Eddies, you have some very high-end options here. Thank you very much for watching. It's been my pleasure to tell you everything about these cars. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to see more of my content, I'll be doing more videos like this in the future. So stay tuned and I hope to see you again later.